Hi, and welcome to this week's Town Team Virtual Happy Hour. Firstly, thank you to those of you who viewed our Happy Hour topic last week. Uh, we are edging towards a thousand views of that, which is awesome. Uh, we'll keep each week's video on our page, so feel free to head back and have a look at our chat with Andrew Ryan and Preston Hegel from last week. And we'll keep this one up for, uh, for weeks to come as well. Uh, this week, we are exploring the theme of neighbourhood human connections. I absolutely love this topic because we're seeing so much innovation in the ways that people have tried to connect with each other um, in this difficult time of isolation. It's uh, really been quite a revelation. Uh, if you think your friends and colleagues might be interested in our chat today, uh, please feel free to share on your personal and group Facebook pages. Uh, before I introduce Bethan Wynn and Steve Wellard tonight, uh, also just a reminder to pop any of your questions into the comment box as well on Facebook and we'll make sure we get to those uh, as we go along. Uh, after the talks, we invite you to join us on Zoom where you can chat to Bethan and Steve face to face and keep the conversation going. Uh, we'll put the link into the uh, chat box as well on Facebook for you to have a look. Uh, so I'd like to introduce Bethan and Steve. Uh, I'll do a full intro of our second speaker, Steve, a bit later. But Steve is the chair of West Perth Local, a town team that has been doing incredible work in the West Perth area since 2018. Hi, Steve. Thanks for joining us. Uh, our first Charlie. guest tonight. Hey, our first guest tonight is Bethan Wynn. Bethan is a critical thinking trainer and community activist. Uh, Bethan is the strata chair of an intergenerational community in Wembley, where residents range from one to 97 years of age. Uh, Bethan describes her pre-Rona life as one of fish and chips by the pool, playing in the courtyard and sharing life stories. Uh, the current crisis has brought the friends and neighbours closer than ever as they rely on each other to meet different needs. Uh, to tell us how life has changed for her community and what they have learned for the future, I welcome Bethan Wynn. Hi, Bethan. Hi, thanks for having me. No, um, thanks yeah. for coming along. I'm excited to share a bit of our story about our little our little community. So I'm just going to share my screen with you and right. uh, I've just got some images to help illustrate what I'm talking about. So hopefully you can see that OK. And Perfect. I just need to make sure that the computer sound is on. Lovely. OK, so, um, yeah, welcome to Kenneton Green. I like, we like to call it Kenny G for short, because Kennington Green is quite posh and fancy sounding. But um, yeah, life at Kenny G. This is Kennington Green from the street. It just looks like some boring gates and a lot of brick. Um, but once you get inside, you see there's a, a pool and a courtyard and there's 15 villas that are kind of built around that central courtyard area. So it's actually really well designed for community. Now, um, the legend of Kenny G is that it was built originally as a retirement village, but that someone forgot to stipulate that there was a, a cutoff that you had to be over 55 or, you know, the normal kind of age that you are allowed to buy a retirement village. And so uh, for my husband and I, it was like we kept looking at houses and we kept seeing like retirement villages. And go, hey, that looks pretty cool. Hey, that's about the right size. And we'd be like, oh, we can't go there. And then this one popped up and we thought, this is perfect. Um, and so it was put to the owners if they wanted to change it and everyone voted not to. And so uh, what you see on screen there is uh, a snapshot of some of the residents. We do have quite a few retired residents, but we also have people like myself who's got young kids. There's another one year old in the complex too. Um, and a couple of um, downsizers and a couple of kids, uh, people who don't have children, just couples. So there's a real mix of ages um, and, and a real spread, which is lovely. Um, one of the residents, Joan, who's in this picture here, who's since passed, uh, this is her with my daughter when she was about a week old. Um, she liked to say that we live in each other's lives, but we're not in each other's pockets, which is a really nice way to put it. So although we are physically very close and I see just because of the outlook of our dining table I see you know the residents on my side at least once a day every single day as they go out for their walks or they nip to the local shops and things um, but we're not in each other's faces and if people you know choose not to kind of get involved and that's fine there's a couple of people that rent who are a bit quieter but most of the owners um, really get stuck in and uh, like you said in the intro we have fish and chip fridays or christmas celebrations uh, basically any excuse for a get together is where we're at <laughs> uh, so you see there's some of the the mix of people and everyone brings their food and it's really nice 
Um, things like lemonade stalls were great because I have immediate customers for my kids. Um, and some of the benefits of this kind of living, um, it really gets you out of your echo chamber. We tend to be online talking to people who are like us, maybe, you know, people from work who are similar to ourselves or people who share similar views. So it gets you out of your echo chamber. Um, some of the health benefits of regular social contact, there's been lots of studies about this, things like improved immunity, lower stress levels, um, just, you know, being generally a bit happier and smilier, it really does everybody good. Um, it gives you perspective on life from the older residents. Um, I remember speaking to the TEDx youth team about this, and they really loved hearing that even some 97 year olds don't feel like they have it all figured out yet. And so for someone in their teens who's going, oh, what am I going to do with my life? that's okay you know and it's great to hear that from someone who's at a different life stage and the fact that no one ever feels ready to I don't know start a family or to do that new job or to write that book or whatever it is the things that they're doing in life um, you just got to go for it sometimes. Um, social contact is really easy, low impact and regular. Um, and so for someone extroverted like me, that's really lovely. You can just snip out and someone might be in their garden or going to get their post. It so provides um, security and support. Um, so the fact that actually they make it more secure than us because they're in all day <laughs> or around the complex uh, but also they feel supported and secure knowing that should anything happen there's someone right next door so we often get those little knocks on the window to check on you know and to make sure or to help with something so yeah there's always help on hand if there's some heavy lifting to be done um memento mori i wrote that here because you know we've, we've lost a few residents obviously with them being um quite elderly some of them um and and of people come and go as well so it just kind of reminds you of um how precious life is really and um it's good for my children being away from grandparents <coughs> in the uk it means they get that you know contact with someone who's a lot older and get to not just be surrounded by people their own age um and the the opposite of that without those good relationships people are at higher higher risk of depression anxiety addiction loneliness dementia poor mental and physical health. So although, you know, it's not a vaccine, <coughs> all of those things, it's been shown again and again to really help those things. So, oh, this was a great quote, <laughs> I saw this yesterday. Um, you know, the difference between being online and being physically among people is a bit like the difference between pornography and sex. It addresses the basic itch, but it's never satisfying. <laughs> so while bit, I can see Kylie giggling in the corner here. While this has all been going on, um, it's been really nice that within our community, we've been able to still maintain some face-to-face -face contact, particularly for those who've really isolated themselves. We can still talk at the door or you know, knock at the window and things like that and maintain distance. So COVID-19 hits. I was told by the uh, strata managers that we had to shut the pool. We may have still snuck in occasionally while the pool time was up, but um, <laughs> things that we've done for each other in that time, we've delivered, they've delivered. Um, so stuff like, you know, I've nipped to the shops on their behalf. They've brought toys over, bits from the newspaper they thought the kids would like, bringing in the bins for each other. Just little things like that have been um, really nice. And um, I was speaking to David from Town Teams about this. I think because we've needed each each other more it's actually strengthened the relationships more we were always you know friendly and very close in many ways but um you know they're very proud independent people a lot of the older residents and so for them to have to accept help has been a bit humbling but also for me just having them there they'll say hey thanks for popping around and I'm like no you're my sanity saver for the day because you're a human being who can have a conversation with me outside of my own family so we've all really appreciated each other um some stuff that's been going on the rainbows um I took my children outside uh, very early doors to draw some rainbows in chalk along the front. All the brickwork was very colourful for the first couple of weeks. Um, and it was really lovely to go out for a walk one day and see Richard, one of the residents at the front, who's a, a man in his 50s, <laughs> had also done his wall with the colours. <laughs> and I said, where did you get the chalk? And he'd gone looking in his daughter's art supplies from years ago and managed to find them and uh, also one of my neighbors who does a lot of quilting actually quilted a little rainbow and she stuck that in the window so all those people that were saying oh don't draw a rainbow people know there's children in the house you go well 
any age can draw a rainbow. And there's quite a few teddies been put out as well in the windows, which has been beautiful. And they've done that, you know, some of them have done it specifically for my children and the other child who's in the complex because they're in a spot where no one else can see it. So it's really lovely, really thoughtful. Um, this has become a prized commodity. We've had actually three birthdays during uh, the last five weeks. So every single person got a nice who gives a crap toilet paper. So luckily they're, they're beautifully wrapped um, and a card and things. And, um, you know, we did what people felt comfortable with. So whether that was a few balloons outside, um, singing happy birthday from a distance, things like that. So the, the toilet papers have been around a few people and they've appreciated the jokes and the things on the inside. So that's been good fun. Um, technical support has been provided. So I hope you can hear this. Can this is me you? helping yeah. Sandy next door get on. Tim would like to access the camera. Can you okay. hear that? All right. I'll give me a thumbs up. Yeah. Change uh, change virtual background now. That's all right. Join with video. Yeah. Hey. Oh, I can't see you. I can see the top so of your head. You access the microphone. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you would like to send you notifications. Okay. Oh my God! I can see you. Hey, I see you. Brothers, please join audio. <laughs> so that every time I watch it makes me smile. She was so pleased with herself that she she did that through just you know uh, it was a half an hour on the phone start to finish, and she's since used that knowledge to help her sister get online and she's been accessing some of her book groups and stuff. So that's been really really lovely, and it's a nice change from just getting. Uh, my lady next door's off aeroplane mode constantly. So there's been new technical challenges, but it's lovely. It's given them an opportunity to, to get online and, and access their friends who are further away as well in a different format. Um, and oh, how do I get to the next one? And we have had a uh, social distance picnic parties. So um, Daphne in the red there, she was 92 uh, last week, I think it was the week before. And she was very much keen to have a celebration. So a few of us gathered around the pool and we kept distance between us and everyone just had a, a quick drink together to toast her birthday, um, which was really nice, you know, and normally she probably would have gone out with one of her many children or grandchildren and been taken out for dinner and things. So it wasn't quite how she wanted to celebrate, but we still managed to mark the occasion and it will definitely be memorable for all of us. Um, so uh post covid we'll talk more about this in a minute but some of the things that are already coming out of it is, as i said feeling a bit closer feeling happier to ask for support as well as give support to each other and um now my kids are getting a bit older and they've seen an awful lot of their neighbors recently more babysitters which is a big thumbs up from me <laughs> um i was trying to think you know it's not just to go hey look how great we are but also how great people watching could be um, in their local area. We're lucky the design of this place really facilitates these relationships, but it's not essential to make it happen where you are. And I know there's lots of other streets, cul-de-sacs, buildings where people have fostered these relationships. The things that they need to happen, they need a champion. Um, and I would say probably myself and Sandy, who you heard on the Zoom there, are, uh, and Daphne, whose birthday it was, were kind of like the main champions. So Daphne popped around a few days ago and she said, hey, should we do uh, Fish and Chip Friday, but make it picnics? Because we can have our, um, you know, 10 people together again. And I was like, yeah, sure. So I, you know, made a Canva invite and we each played postman and put it all around there. So you need, a, you know, a couple of people maybe who will champion the cause. Otherwise, these things kind of fall apart a little bit um, you might not be asked to step up but it doesn't mean that you can't um, and and so that real town team uh, ethos of you know somebody's got to do it and that somebody might as well be you um, and and there's a lot to be said for taking on that role and that leadership role get out of your comfort zone sometimes it feels a bit weird to go knocking on doors and I must admit having a three-year-old who's very keen to knock on doors and generally if you run away but um uh, or a dog or something like that they do help break the ice but you know there's nothing wrong with just knocking on a door and most people are very happy and very pleased to get that knock and have a chat um I'd say start small keep it simple um again that's what the advice uh, I remember Kylie saying to us town team West Leaderville was you know keep it simple just do something little make a start and then see how it goes and um, having patience is really good because you know it does take a long time we've been here 
four and a half years now. Um, so that's been quite a while to build up those relationships. Um, like I said, good design helps, but it's not essential. I do feel for people who are in um, apartment blocks where there's uh, security to get onto each floor and things like that. So, you know, this does really facilitate it here. Um, and not everybody will want to be part of it. And that's okay. I think you just have to accept sometimes um, that some people just aren't that bothered and, and that's just, you know, their values. But for me and for us as a family and for us as a community, we feel very, very lucky and very grateful to be here. And that's it. That's it from me. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Bethan. i um, got a couple of questions. Um, firstly, though, just, just such a beautiful story. I it just makes my heart swell to even hear that that's happening out in our community. And in yeah. fact, you know, as you've rightly pointed out, it might have been a little bit easier maybe in your in your community, but I, I think that sort of thing can happen anywhere, whether it's a street, an apartment block. Um, I know for myself, um, my daughter did a bake sale once and that was the instigator of our whole community around, around us. It's just what, sometimes it takes one little action. And actually Tracy is asking the question, you know, how, what was the instigator? What, where did it start? What was the first thing that happened to, to, to get this all started for your community? Um, I think it, it started before I did. Um, so the place was built in 1987. And my understanding is that um, a lovely lady called Olga, number five, um, her and two other ladies who lived close to each other somewhere in Floriat all decided to downsize together. So they arrived already knowing each other very well. So I find it quite amusing. Um, one of the ladies at the front, she says she's known uh, Kim, a gentleman who lives here as well, since he was a little boy. And he is, I don't know how old he is, but he's not young. <laughs> I, I guess in his 70s, he's never told me. But um, yeah, the, it, it, it already had a sense of community. Um, and people like Joan, who you saw in one of those first pictures of my daughter, she was one of the original residents. Um, I think there's three, two, maybe two of the original residents left now. Um, so uh, there's a funny story when we bought the place um, my husband was around putting up an extra wall in the garage and he said he turned around and there was two people stood in the garage and he's like <laughs> oh, where did you come from and it was uh, it was Daphne and Joan who'd sort of popped in to just you know be nosy with the new person and and we've since done that when uh, number one we can see number one out of our from our dining room table and as soon as they got the keys and they came around to the house when they moved in a few months ago um me and the kids ran out there and were like over the fence hello hello welcome to the community <laughs> did you know about the secret gate and did you know about this and we do this on a friday and da, da, da. so um we were welcomed into it and then we've kind of tried to continue it I suppose um yeah yeah beautiful um I think too you know you've talked a little bit about um you know the changes that happened while COVID-19 restrictions were in place but now that we're starting to see these restrictions lift have you thought about like how it's going to change your community your little community permanently I mean what I mean, I love the idea that the the upskilling of the neighbour who now knows how to use her phone properly and things like that. But how do you think it's changed your um, your your community permanently in the future? Um, I think because there are so many elderly residents, we're probably going to be a bit slower going back to normal, as it were. So although they are now popping over to the shops and things, um, uh, some are still very much staying at home. Um, but we, yeah, we've just become a bit closer, I think, in the way that when you go through a difficult experience with a group of people, um, then you you kind of bond. Um, and yeah, you know, we, we kind of liked each other and we hung out a bit before, but there's been a lot more of that and, and relying on each other. Um, yeah. That's but who right. knows? We'll see what how it pans out. <laughs> well, this is it. This is it. Uh, and Steve, what about you and your community? Have you? I mean, you're in an apartment complex. Yeah, have yeah. you seen a lot of this going on? Where you are? I know you've got a bit of a different demographic, but what have you seen? It, it, it's definitely a different demographic. Um, but we're seeing a lot more interactions. I think even just um, the, the elevator interactions, even though everybody's keeping their distance. It's so much more social now. People are wanting to say hello. People are wanting to, to sort of see what's happening and how they can help. I think one of the great positives that's coming out of the COVID situation is that people are slowing down a bit and 
appreciating others around them. And I think we are seeing a little bit, just a little bit more of that community feel, even in high rise apartment okay. buildings, which is nice. But um, probably a question I had for you, Bethan, was it's a beautiful story and a fantastic situation you've got there. And you, you did mention that it seemed to be a unique situation where people of, of your age were allowed to go into this village. Do you think that now or your experience has been a positive catalyst to have been introduced to other areas and, and other homes at all across the city? I, I would love to see more places um, designed in a way to facilitate this kind of interaction. Absolutely. I mean, I, I know, um, for example, uh, Chris and Mike Green, who have Myrtle Live in West Leaderville, uh, Mike is an architect, <laughs> and I've spoken to both of them very much about um, <coughs> needing good design to facilitate things like that, having those public spaces where people kind of just hang out that little bit longer, you know, creating spaces that people want to linger to make those you know to to facilitate those relationships um because uh i've seen you know some new apartments uh one in subiaco somebody showed me where literally you know for because there's a lot of people who live alone the security is really high to get into the building to get between the floors and all those sorts of things which i completely understand but also it makes those interactions really difficult and it just, you know, reminds me of, um, you know, when you're uh, in the UK in student halls and you'll just have like, you know, 10 people on a corridor and you can just knock on someone's bedroom door. Like, obviously, those situations, you, you're kind of forced to make friends, whereas, um, you know, design for a lot of places, it's very much about separation. Um, and particularly if you're on a, a street where there's lots of big houses and everybody's got a gate and their cars at the front and they hang out at the back, then those sorts of designs really don't facilitate community engagement so, I don't know it's I would love to see more of it for sure we we would love to help you spread the message and the, the good news story you got there so <laughs> yeah it's great it's a really great story and uh, thanks for your comment too Al who said that you know he's never seen so many families out walking and uh, in, enjoying the outdoors while this has been happening mm. and so, safely interacting with each other while they're out doing it and I've really noticed that as well so uh, there's certainly some silver linings in there but um, yeah let's hope that we carry those forward into the future as well. Uh, can we move on to yourself now Steve? Um, thank Thank you, Bethan. That was really inspiring. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, Steve is the chairperson. Thank you. Welcome, Steve. Is the chairperson of West Perth Local, a town, st town team established in 2018 as a new precinct organisation for residents, businesses, and anyone who loves the West Perth Hay Street precinct. Uh, they've, been, they've been there to drive vibrancy, life, and activity, and make it a better place to uh, work, live, and play. Uh, Steve lives in an apartment in West Perth and is part of a team of 12 diverse volunteers who have injected street art events, free parking and much <coughs> more into uh, West Perth. Uh, Steve is here tonight to chat to us about City Sessions, a joint initiative between West Perth Local, East Perth Community Group and Activate Perth. Uh, what commenced as a one-off initiative in East Perth has now grown uh, through close collaboration to bring safe, socially distant, compliant music events running simultaneously across 10 locations at a time. Uh, last weekend, they actually collaborated on a very special Anzac Day service across the roof rooftops of the city. And I think they may have something special planned for Mother's Day too, but I'll, I'll let Steve elaborate on that. Uh, here is Steve to tell us more about it. Uh, I should point out that Steve does everything he does in West Perth while holding down a pretty big corporate role uh, and dealing with people all over the world at different time zones. And so I feel really privileged that you've taken the time to um, catch up with us tonight, Steve. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Kylie. And hello, everybody. And um, yes, I do hold down a day job, although most of the time it's a night job because I record into the... <laughs> so I, I love actually the work we do in this space. It's just so rewarding and a great balance um, with the things that I have to deal with overnight. But uh, yes, I'm Steve Wellard, I'm the, the chair of West Perth Local. So we kicked <coughs> off, um, as Kylie said there, in about uh, 2017, 2018. And I'll just try and share my screen. Oops, sorry. I'm the one making mistakes now. <coughs> okay, can you do that? Hopefully you can. Okay, so West Perth Local started off around 2018 um, as a small group of um, 
mainly business owners that got together uh, to try and make things happen. And it was a bit of a tough start. West Perth, bounded by the city of Perth, is a bit of a tough crowd um, to get socially involved. So we've spent probably, well, two years. I've uh, been there for 18 months. And we've spent a lot of that time working out how we can get people out of those apartment towers, how we can get people on the street. Um, sorry. And then basically getting them interact together. Um, we've had things like Jane's walks. We've had pictures in the parks. We've got our um, park that has been launched there. We uh, were running um, West Perth Wednesdays where we would get uh, everybody together and, and socialise and talk about what's going on during the week. So bit by bit, we were getting a great following for people coming out of their apartments, getting together and meeting each other. But then- uh, Steve, just quickly, yeah. can I interrupt you? You're, are you, you're sharing your uh, run sheet at the moment. Are you, I don't think you're intending to share your run sheet. Uh, that's correct. I'm not intending to share my run sheet. Okay, <laughs> that's all right. I just thought I'd give you a heads up there so we can uh, have a look at your, your um, PowerPoint. Thank you for letting me know. How's that? That's all right. That is beautiful. Thank you. Please continue. Okay, so then, um, of course, March 2020 came along and um, all of a sudden we couldn't socialise anymore. So we really sat together as a team and thought, well, what do we do to try and get all these interactions and get our community together if we can't come together as one? And at the same time, we were having that discussion at West Perth. We noticed that over at East Perth, um, the great team over there, uh, headed by Anne-Marie Ferguson, who was an amazing idea generator. Uh, she was inspired by the, the people on TV singing from balconies in Italy and thought, well, if, if people can share music from distance, then why can't we do that here in Perth? So they kicked off um, a, a series of small concerts in East Perth where the, uh, the performers were all kept at a, a safe difference from each other. Uh, and just performed for an hour. And that had such a, a wonderful response from the community. All of a sudden, people could be in their apartments, they could be um, distanced from everybody uh, and be able to hear music and, and have a bit of light entertainment. So following that one-off um, concert, uh, we thought, well, hang on, let, let's try and do this across the city. So a group of us got together and we formed City Sessions. So City Sessions is a collaboration between East Perth Community Group, Activate Perth and West Perth Local. So we formed a, a six person committee, uh, that's the six uh, up there in the top right hand corner. Of course, myself and Anne Marie at the top. Uh, we have Leela, uh, who uh, is our event coordinator from West Perth Local. Um, Raj is amazing. She actually hosts a, a one hour interview uh, information uh, uh, streaming service um, of a Wednesday afternoon. It's great to see from East Perth. Um, down the bottom there, Kylie is the chair of uh, Activate Perth and she's really the egg in the cake mix. She brings us all together and makes things happen. And the bottom left, of course, is Michelle, who, uh, who heads up um, community activation at Fraser's Group, but also as an ex-muso. She's fantastic at bringing all these musicians together so we can actually um, put on these concerts. So what we did is... Um, we form those three teams, but we all act as one group. So this is where the community collaboration and innovation comes together. We don't have the boundaries between what East Perth does, what West Perth does, or what Activate Perth does. We're all acting as one with the one goal of trying to bring these uh, concerts to Perth. Um, we ended up getting fantastic support from the city of Perth, um, from the, the noise um, people, and also from um, compliance, uh, WA Police, Quite a lot of work was done there to make sure that we could set these concerts up and be compliant. Um, of course, our building owners and the musicians, you have to understand that these musicians went from their world of um, sitting in front of audiences six nights a week, uh, getting that fantastic interaction with the world, and then all of a sudden it stopped. So we found that the musicians that are out there are actually almost clawing the ceiling, wanting the opportunity to perform, and they've come on board fantastically for us. Um, but of course, we couldn't do all this unless we could prove to the government authorities and to ourselves that we could do it safely. So a lot of work had to be done behind the scenes to develop a very detailed risk assessment with those strict social distancing and sanitising procedures in place. It, it sounds a bit ordinary that for each time we took a set of musicians to a set of apartments, 
we had to almost treat as if the musicians may be with COVID-19 and we had to consider almost the apartment building was an infected apartment building. So had to put a lot of things in place and be very detailed to make sure that we weren't going to create a cluster, that we weren't going to end up on the news as the cause of some sort of outburst of um, the virus. But it's all come together. Um, the first one was a bit nervous. We had, uh, I think, uh, six locations in East Perth. We had three locations in West Perth. Um, we played for an hour. Um, we only advertised probably a couple of hours beforehand. And then bit by bit, we saw people come out from balconies. We saw people interacting. Um, we saw amazing um, positive signs of people just enjoying themselves. Um, and from that course, we then uh, moved towards, well, what can we do next? Um, we, we did the one-off concerts. We all got a great buzz out of it. So we thought we've got a couple of big dates coming up. We've got Anzac Day, we've got Mother's Day, and we've got WA Day coming up. So on Anzac Day, it's a beautiful thing, but with, with Kings Park closed, we approached Wasso and a whole lot of professional musicians. We managed to position 10 uh, bugle players across buildings across the city, and they all played in pretty much unison um, at 6 a.m. On, on Anzac Day. Um, it's a shame it rained, but it was still a, a wonderful moment. Um, and then, of course, we're planning, as Kylie said, to do another series of concerts uh, this Mother's Day, but we won't have the details uh, on that until later on this week. Um, down the bottom there, you can see we've had so far three concert days, over 21 locations, 40 musicians. We've live streamed it. But most importantly, we've brought just a little bit of sunshine to about 2,000 families across Perth that are locked up in apartments, couldn't go anywhere, pretty frustrated, um, and it's really had a positive effect. Um, the, the feedback that we've had, um, I think uh, from one of the areas we had, which is Market Rise Apartments, somebody wrote to us and said, look, I was having a really down day, and then all of a sudden I opened my screen door and I could hear this music. I went out onto the balcony and all of a sudden I could see this band playing. And so for the next hour, she said, it just turned the whole week around and made life so much better just by that one uh, interaction. Um, on Anzac Day, we had a building three blocks away from one of our performers write us a letter and, and send just a small present saying that uh, it was so special to be able to open the window and hear our buglers do the last post um, in the morning. So it's been incredibly rewarding um, and it really shows the sort of thing that we've got here that when neighbourhoods come together, when we break down barriers and we basically kick bureaucracy out of the room, we can do some pretty amazing things with very limited resources and get a big return to the community. Um, what I might do if I can is try and show some of the videos I've got. Hopefully this will work. Um, let me... Oops. This is uh, one of the videos that we had, uh, or one of the performers that we had at the Air Apartments in West Perth. So you should be able to see here the interaction. Even the musician was amazed. I'll let it play. Okay, I won't play all of that, but I just wanted to add, um, we spoke to the uh, committee of owners in this building and just said, look, we, we had something like 150 apartments were watching that then, and more than half of them were really interacting with us. And we said to them, like, you've got all these wonderful outdoor areas in the complex. Do you have parties and things like this before COVID-19? And the response was really interesting was that even though there's all those people in that building and they used to try to put on social events, people didn't socialise, people didn't want to get involved. 
And I think we, we said there earlier, this COVID-19 situation is making people slow down and say, okay, maybe community is better than my busy life. Maybe if I take some time out, I can enjoy my neighbours and interact a lot better. Mm -hmm. and we're definitely uh, seeing that with the concert series. Talk, um, um, just before I head off, I'll just do, this next one is just gorgeous. I won't play all of it, but um, this <laughs> was a professional um, filming that we did of one of our Anzac buglers um, at Elizabeth Key, as you can see. Um, it's a beautiful moment. We had the entire area lit up in red for Anzac Day. I'll just let it play for a little bit. It's magic. Okay. Bad stuff, and then I should be finished by then. <laughs> Okay, so as you can imagine, it's a beautiful film and um, I just wanted to finish by saying again, uh, we came together because we were three community groups that very thankfully we had funding to do lots of activities and then as soon as March came along we could we, we had the funds there we had some ability but all our all our plans just got thrown out the window so we came together threw some innovation on the table and I think we've produced some beautiful outcomes um, within the rules uh, that we have today and we've all done it as a group of volunteers in very short time frames and by lots of different people, lots of different organisations going, you know what, normally this would take weeks, normally this would take months to do these applications, but this is a good thing, we're going to do it today. So apart from thanking the other five people on our team, i just like to thank all the different organisations out there that are dropping bureaucracy and allowing this sort of fantastic thing happen. That's me. Any questions? I just want to, that, that dropping bureaucracy and letting things happen. That's the quote of the night so far. Oh, no, no, Beth, and that other quote of yours, um, I won't go into that one again, might have been a close second. <laughs> uh, just a couple of comments from Facebook uh, 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 there, Steve. Uh, Sally Duffield, thank, uh, Sally Duffield-Smith, thanks for tuning in. Uh, driving through East Perth, I could hear the music, so stop the car and listen. So there was someone out there who was driving through that got to hear that. Uh, another one, uh, Lynn Yanling, who's been a great supporter of the um, the uh, interactions that we've been having uh, on Zoom and on Facebook. Uh, she's from Singapore. She said, this is so amazing. I wish we can do this here in Singapore. So great to have you along again tonight, uh, Lynn. Uh, Sally Duffield-Smith asked the question, how could we do this in streets with no apartments and get the same sort of interaction? So, I mean, I think it can be done. Have you got any thoughts on that, Steve? Yeah, it, it's a bit of a challenge. And if you go back to what I was saying there, that for us to get permission to do this from uh, the city, state government and police, uh, we have to be able to prove or we have to be able to ensure the safety of the people, the building, but also the musicians. Um, so every single one of our musicians are positioned inside the property behind locked gates and physically barricaded from the public. Um, we would love to do it on streets, but terrible to say, but you, you have to have something in place to stop that one crazy person who wants to run up and give the musician a hug. In the COVID world, we, but have, we can't do that. True. We did have one comment from Jessica on Facebook has suggested maybe um, roving busker style, which is a nice idea and I'm sure given some considerations could possibly work. Um, Jessica's also said uh, people will come out in their driveways and deck chairs, I suppose, or sit on their nature strip. And, and I know I've certainly seen a lot of, um, certainly where I live, there's been a, a big uh, movement towards driveway dinners that has been happening over the yeah. last few weeks. And there's been some music getting played uh, in that instance. So it, it can happen. Oh, so <laughs> Tracy suggested let's do it on the back of some trucks like Canning mm -hmm. Highway, <laughs> do Highway to Hell. I, I like that idea, yeah. That's an awesome idea. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, so, 
you touched, I mean, I, I loved the impact too of the person that was having a bad day and it just completely turned their day around. And I'm sure that's the one you've heard of, but I would imagine that there are people all over that precinct who that had the similar reaction to that. But I also wonder, um, how do you think, you know, things are going to change? I mean, we're, we're, we're saying, again, like I was asking uh, Bethan, you know, things are starting to change. We're seeing restrictions lifting. How is your community going to be forever changed by this? Is it going to be forever changed by this? Yeah, I, I, I think it is going to be forever changed. I think there's going to be a lot of positives that come out of it. Um, look, we, we've had discussions um, with the city and, and it's, it's very early days, but they've sort of said, we, we like what we're seeing with these um, community concerts. And perhaps this is something that doesn't have to happen just during COVID-19, that this is something that we should be doing for apartment building complexes to try and get people to interact better in the future. So if, if this can be, I don't know, summer concert series each year in apartment buildings, bring it on. If it, bring, if it allows people to interact um, more than in the car park or, or it's simply high in the lift, bring it on. I think um, definitely in the city, too many people are living in high rise buildings and they don't know the neighbours on their floor mm. and help people to build those relationships across each floor, across the building and let us, let us help. Yeah. And I think from the West Perth local perspective, do you think um, you will do things differently in the future as a team? Um, yes, yes. I think we've we've learnt the power now of bringing our activations to the people rather than putting something on and hoping people will turn up. Okay. So I think I think I think definitely we'll focus more on what we can do closer to where people live in their yeah, community. Nice. Any comments or questions from you, Bethan? Um, I just was nodding there, thinking that's that's a really sort of useful and powerful way to put it, like just go to the people. And I guess what um, is different at the moment is that the people are at home. <laughs> um, whereas I guess normally, you know, if there's an impromptu concert by your pool and, you know, you don't know who's going to be in to hear that, but, um, you know, that has made, um, you know, dropping in for a chat a lot easier because you know that they're at home and likewise, you know, putting on a concert, you know that they're going to be around to listen. Um, but I think that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it, to, to meet people where they're at. Yeah, and I think too, the, the, the big uh, overarching thing that I'm getting from people that I talk to as well is that they won't take human connections and neighbourhood connections <coughs> for granted anymore and I think we all have definitely taken that for granted and mm. all of these things that have been happening you know that the driveway dinners or the, the the concerts on the balcony a bit like the quote that you you said earlier um Bethan is they're only getting us a certain way but they all demonstrate how much we crave that human connection and I I really hope that all of this will continue to carry forward after all this as we go back to normal life Mm, yeah, definitely. That quote's from a book called Lost Connections by Johan Hari. And reading that was, it just sort of crystallised for me how much sense it makes to be in, to live in a community. Um, and he's got some really good research to support that notion that, you know, a lot of issues that people have these days are because we are so disconnected. Um, so yeah, anything that brings us together and helps us realise how important we are to each other is a good thing, I think. Great. Just a last comment there on the uh, Lynn from Singapore. Great advice, Steve, bringing activ activities to people. She loved that. That was a big tip from uh, Lynn. Thank you for that. Uh, any you. last comments before we start to wrap things up and maybe continue the conversation on Zoom for those that want to join in, Beth and, and Steve? Which, which really is the same as life. Steve? Um, <laughs> Steve? Just, just right. thanks for having us. I think it's great. Again, it's a crazy world, isn't it? We do this in person Very normally, but being able to do this sort of talk so the Zoom and interact with people, obviously, around the world is, is fantastic. So thank you, Town Team. Yeah, I'll, I'll echo that. There you go. That could be my closing comment. Just, yeah, thank you for <laughs> allowing us to share our stories. And, and if it inspires one other person to go knock on their neighbour's door or play their guitar out front instead of in their lounge room, then fabulous. <laughs> yeah, great. One, one, All right. One, sorry, one, one last thing. Please do. There is, 
there is zero copyright on what we are doing. So if anybody's in, please contact us. We don't care how many other communities out there feel as good as ours when we have our concert series. And that's what's so beautiful about the town teams and community groups generally is that, you know, they want to, they don't want anyone to have to reinvent the wheel. So if you want to chat to Steve about uh, what he does at West Perth Local or how they made it happen, then join us on Zoom or you can follow them on Facebook at West Perth Local. Uh, Bethan, uh, you can be found on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn at uh, bethanwin.com.au. Uh, Bethan, uh, as I think I mentioned earlier, is a critical thinking specialist and she's got some really amazing courses coming up too. So, you know, if people want to look at your Facebook page or Instagram or your website, they can have a look at those as well. Uh, there's some really cool stuff that you can apply professionally. And firstly, oh, that was a big um, plug. Um, but yeah, so next week we're going to be talking about recovery projects, which I think is really timely because as we're starting to feel these restrictions lifting, I think recovery <laughs> projects are going to be really important in town centres and communities generally. So we look forward to sharing with you uh, the speakers that we have for that shortly. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be heading over to, or well, we're going to be hanging out here in Zoom, but if you'd like to head to Zoom, Jimmy is going to put the link to the um, Zoom meetup into the comments on Facebook. And while I'm mentioning uh, Jimmy the Lips, I should say a huge thank you to Jimmy and Dave for their amazing tech support tonight. Uh, and yeah, so we'll uh, catch you in Zoom if you'd like to continue the conversation with us and uh, we'll catch up with you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.